Howdy, hey, and hello. Currently we're... Um, one second. Alright, what the crap is that? That's more like it. Currently we're in the middle of making a better website. So far we've covered HTML, which is the backbone structure, CSS, which is the styling structure, and JavaScript, which is the client-side scripting structure. Next on the list is PHP, but before we get to that, I'm going to have to stray from the path a little bit like a lost sheep. Until now, we've been able to make everything work with just a text editor and a web browser. But now we have to incorporate another element that I probably need to cover. A server. What is that and why do we need it? A server is a means of putting information like a website on the internet so that others can see it. Apart from that, our remaining topics require a server with PHP and MySQL software installed on it. Now, there are tons of server services called hosting providers that you can find online, and as long as they have that software installed, they should work. However, since this series is about making a website from scratch, I thought it would be fitting to show you how to set up your own server and host your web page from your own computer. The server software we'll be using is called Apache, which is the most popular server software out there. We'll also need to install PHP and MySQL software as well. We could install these individually, but luckily there's a program called WAMP that will install everything we need all at once. WAMP is meant specifically for Windows, but LAMP and MAMP are alternatives for other OS's. So run through the installation process using the default info, and then it should auto-launch the WAMP server and you'll see an icon for it in your system tray. If it's green, that means you're up and running. If it's yellow or red, click on the icon and select either Start All Services or Put Online. Then if you go to a browser and type in localhost or 127.0.0.1, you should see the default WAMP page. Congrats, you're now hosting your own website. But we want our page to show up on this website, not the default one. So let's change that. In the WAMP icon, go to the www directory. This is where your web page files will go. So first either delete or rename the file that's already there, and then copy over all your website files. Then refresh your browser and you should now see your own page. This means we're on the internet now, right? Uh, not quite yet. Most homes use what's called a router that splits the internet connection to multiple computers. By default, the router will probably block any request to access your server. So we have to bypass this block with what's called port forwarding. So in your browser type 192.168.1.1, which is the default IP address for most routers. This should bring up your router settings. Now because there are thousands of different routers out there, the odds that your setup looks anything like mine is very slim. So to figure out port forwarding for your router, you should first find out who makes your router and then contact them for assistance. On mine, I can go to firewall options, select port forwarding, and create a new rule that forwards requests for my web page straight to my server. If all is well, now you should be able to access your website from any computer on the internet. How? By typing in your public IP address. Whoa, whoa, whoa now another IP address? Yep, now here's the difference. Your home is assigned a public IP address that goes to your router. Your router then splits that into various private IP addresses for each computer in your house. So each access point has its own IP. That said, how do you know what your home IP address is? The easiest way is to get it from a website such as seemyip.com. Just type that IP address into your web browser and bada boom, you should see your web page. But we're still missing something, a URL. A URL is like www.google.com that uses an actual name called a domain name to point to the IP address. This makes it easier to remember instead of having to memorize a bunch of different numbers. So how can you get a domain name? We need to use a DNS service provider. If you want www.mywebsite.com or something like that, that's called a top level domain name and those cost money. 
But if you can settle for a subdomain like mywebsite.someothersite.com, then that you can get for free. I'll be using noip.com to do this for me. Just sign up and go to hosting and then add a new domain. Give it whatever name you want and choose whatever top level domain you want. Now you can use this instead of your IP address to access your website. Keep in mind that if your computer isn't on, your server won't be on either. So unless you don't mind your website being down, you'll need to keep your computer on 24-7. Now we've got a nice looking website that we've created ourselves hosted on the web with a server that we created ourselves. On top of that, we now have the software installed to move on to the next stage of our website awesomeness, PHP. All right, be sure to check out Tinkernut.com on Tumblr, Facebook, and Twitter. That's it for this tutorial. More go to Tinkernut.com.